Alright, so we have a new endgame mode in Genshin. Imaginarium Theater. Um, the setting for this mode is like phenomenal. It's out of this world. It's something that I honestly didn't expect. Like, you know, we have the Spiral Abyss where you just teleport to some point and just begin it. Uh, with this, you're presented a room, you have your characters, you have these fortune slips. And the fun part is not the fortune slips or anything, it's the characters made basically because you know, these characters are voiced. They like. They're amazing. Wolfie is there, who's probably like very cute, and he has the Aranara walking sound. So it's just it's just so cute. Overall, presentation-wise, I think you know Genshin never fails and never disappoints. So props to them for like you know creating such a such a beautiful UI and all. I've already done it once, but I'm gonna do it all over again to like you know just show that. It, it may be difficult for like you know people who don't have characters built but like you know it's I feel that this mode is aimed for people who who are like year one players or year two players not for people who began post Sumeru or post Fontaine you know people who haven't pulled for many characters um, this mode is for those who have a good set of characters and properly built them and it just works because you know you have these special guest stars as well and I mean I don't know if these special guest stars will always align with the banner characters but if not I think these special guest stars can be the make or break of this entire game mode so as you can see I have tons of five stars but even if I don't I have so many four stars as well and it just works. It's just good enough. You can find an alternative for every character. You know, for Kazuha, you can have Sucrose. For Miko, you can have Fischl. Uh, you can switch out Raiden or Dia for Beidou. So, you know, you, it, it depends on your roster. It depends on everything that you own. So, you know, you can say that it generally favors, uh, favors players who, like, you know, prioritized getting new characters instead of, like, you know, building one character and making them strong so it's just that you have these wondrous boons over here which is which kind of like the buffs that you get in simulated universe but uh on a lower scale because then you have to spend some flowers or something but you know the thing about this is that you know this entire thing everything that i've learned from it like you know from playing it maybe once or two or three times um it's not difficult, but it requires brain power. It requires you choosing which characters you want to use when. So, all right, I'm just going to talk you through my second run. Um, talking about the UI and all, as always, it's perfect. So, initially, you're just set with trial characters. Like, you know, you don't have any other options. You have to open with the, these six characters that they give you. But after that, you know, as as you clear a stage, you get one companion, one character extra. Now that's RNG, which is which sucks, honestly. But okay, so you can see uh, these teams. Um, you might not that these teams might not work together, but. I think this 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 is what makes it fun, like you know, trying these weird team comps. And as a player who began Genshin playing with weird teams, like you know, I played uh, Animo, Lumine with Noel and Lisa and Rosaria, so like you know, basically Superconduct and Crystallize. And then after that, I played Kuching with Hu Tao and then Barbara and Ning Wang. So everything that developed into weird team comps so i like actually like this mode over the abyss because first it favors weird team comps which is actually pretty fun to play like you know you have to like think and you have to you don't have to like you know memorize rotations you just have to see which is working where it's like you know i'm just using pyro swirl to defeat enemies i'm not even switching to shinobu because she's not needed so I mean, some people might call it as a dead weight thing, but it's it's fine for me because you know, 
depending on your roster like you know if you do not want to you if you want to save shinobu for the end you could switch shinobu with some other character so you know you have things like that the good part is this which i'm going to show you right now is that these characters actually talk and you know initially when i approached them i was like they won't be voiced right but then when they were voiced i was like wow wow this is amazing this is a walk in the park compared to the field studies that Haravatat used to send us out on. <sighs> Never mind. No point in dredging up the past. Go on then. I suppose you ought to rest if you really are tired. I've seen too many junior scholars ruin their health for the sake of their academic pursuits. Let that be a cautionary tale. Those who fail to heed the advice of their elders do so at their own peril. No, I love Farazan's voice. I love it so much. I love Farazan as a character. Like you know, some people say that she requires C six to be usable and all, but I've been using her since C zero, and it just works. Like you know, now I have C six obviously, and I'm using my C six Farazan, but still, <laughs> I even made it use. Uh, I even focused on like you know using her at C zero. Uh, one tip I would like to drop is that you know, whenever you get the companion, like like the companion card go for it just go for it um don't focus on the boons the boons aren't that great initially like you know the the initial stages can be cheesed with anything with like you know with the randomest team comps ever but companions you need companions and the quicker you get companions the more variety that you have and the more planning that you can do with saving so you just got to plan it out and you have refresh attempts like you know you can refresh them if you're not getting a companion card but i would recommend like you know getting all your companions by the end of act 6 or maybe act 7 but yeah you should have all your companions by the end of act 6 it will be much better honestly so like yeah, i'm just going to use the same team that i used for act 1 because you know it just works and i i'm not going to use them again because you know Farzan only works with uh, Scaramouche Wanderer because you know he's an animal DPS. The other animal characters that I have are Kazuha, who's a buffer, Xianyun, who's who's kind of like a semi semi DPS but a healer as well, and then Jean. So like you know, Farzan is pretty much useless. So I'm just you know using all of them initially. Poma I'm not using like I'm using it over here because I don't think. Um, I'll have any requirement for him later on, especially because you know I know I'm going to get Dia, and Dia as character is much more comfortable for me to play. Like you know, I just adapted myself to playing with Dia, so it's just much more comfortable compared to Thoma. So like you know, you can just switch it up. You can just like you know do random stuff. The the times are also not that well, like what should I say? Not that hard compared to Abyss. Like in the Abyss, your Primogen rewards are restricted to clear times, which I still feel is like one of the dumbest decisions ever. So this mode is just focusing on you know just, just clearing the mode. They don't even give a give a damn about your Stella count. It's like if you just completed it, you're getting the Primogen reward, which is which is like so much more helpful for casual players, for people who just want to get the Primogen stuff. Abyss, I think why many people don't do the Abyss is because, you know, the timer, the timer restricts them. I'm pretty sure, like, you know, if they just remove the timer and they were just like, okay, if you can complete float well, we're going to give you primers. So that's, that's going to be okay. You can have a timer, but you can have the timer working from zero to whatever, not from 10 minutes to zero, you know, like, you know, uh, whatever it is now, the, the complete opposite. It's so, alright. Okay, oh, one other tip. If you're going for wondrous boons, I would def. Uh, I mean, I have no idea what external audience support is. So, like, you know, if anybody, if you know, just please tell me. But the boons that I would suggest is that, you know, there are certain boons which release shock waves. So, like, you know, you have these pyro shock wave, you have an electro shock wave, you have a hydro shock wave. And to be honest, the Hydra Shockwave is possibly the most useful boon that you can get. And if you get it, just, just get it. 
just get it no questions asked because you know you have hydro swirl as an option you have vaporize you have electrocharged and if you have alahitama baiju then you can create bloom and then do hyper bloom sometimes so it just works it just works very well also the trial characters are actually pretty good especially the dps ones they do a good amounts of damage so i would recommend that you know just save them for bosses save all your dps characters for bosses so like, you know you have the jade plume terror shroom you know that it gets uh, deactivated using pyro so i would suggest save our lakino for her or you know if you have your own dps pyro dps that works too because you know who tower works um you can try the bonus um the bonus what should i say the bonus achievements i don't really care that much about it because you know once i figured out that you know the stellas mean nothing except bragging rights i was like okay i don't i don't i'm not interested in bragging i mean it's just okay so yeah that's just me though also one other thing do not use your supports immediately like you know if you have a xiangling or a bennett don't use them initially don't just don't save them for the final stages if you're playing on hard difficulty just save them for the final stages it's going to be tremendously helpful um one thing that i don't like is that you know how you are brought back into this uh room i would like if we if we had an option like you know do you want to continue from there or do you want to just you know go back to your room and rest i wish we had that option but apart from that this is just like you know a selection mode a selection like how should i put it mm. you know you have this i don't know if it's comparable or not but a uh, pokemon black and white elite 4 it was the first time that i think uh, we got to choose who we could fight in which order so like you know, i remember that they had a dark type uh, elite 4 then they had a ghost type elite 4 they had a psychic type elite 4 and then and then there was something like i think a fighting type or something so like you know well, we had four types and for the first time you could choose um who you wanted to like you know fight so i feel like this is kind of similar like you know you can choose the teams that you want to approach with first like you know if if the opponent is cryo then you would like to approach it with a pyro enemy if you have more pyro units so approaching cryo enemies would be much more simpler than you know approaching uh, enemies like electro slimes or normal enemies so you just got to figure out which combat mode is going to be best suited for your available roster and then just you know plan it out that way also as you can see like you know if you saw the scene changed and the scenic the scenery is in this more like i don't know if it's going to change in the future or if it's going to just remain these three as they are now but it's gorgeous like you know um playing the abyss gets very boring and, and it's extremely boring but you know um the what should i say is is basically a domain and it's boring to look at for fighting here it just makes you feel more epic also i hate i hate monoliths i hate monoliths you're going to see me die here probably i am pretty sure i cannot protect the monolith or maybe it's a part uh, like the second one after this man i just i hate that i didn't get cloran Cause she 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 looks so fun to play and she's amazing. She like she's an amazing DPS, but it just sucks. I'm trying to get Sigewin though, but I don't know if I'll be able to get her as well because you know the primos aren't looking that rich right now. I feel the problem with Monolith acts like you know, in this one is that the enemies are too aggressive, like you know super aggressive and. the taunts don't work like you know i tried to go with lenny in one of them and with lenny you know since he uh, like you know when you do this charge attack sends out a grimalkin hat so this that grimalkin hat 
that actually acts like a taunt like you know like mona's skill but these enemies just outrightly ignored that hat and they were like you know screw it we're just gonna go after the monolith so i feel like you know they they just bypass the taunts which is kind of i mean i i, I don't appreciate it given that that shouldn't happen but oh whatever i don't know man oh, whatever so it just sucks it just sucks so bad all right it's a long mode like some i mean i would recommend something play it at your own pace like you know after each node just take a break talk to these characters and then you're going to spend a good one one and a half hour on this mode is it repeatable it might be like if you want to get the stellas and all it's repeatable i wish getting stellas gave you more toy medals like you know mm, you, you only get three from each like you know cycle and we open off with six poses so i don't think we'll be able to max it out ever like you know unless they put a pause on the new poses for one or two cycles then maybe people will be able to catch up but if this is the trend i don't think that you know even there we'll have to choose which poses we have to buy and then the poses are actually pretty cool for photo like photo clickers me i love to click photos so as you can see i am deciding which one should i do because you know it's it's actually quite difficult so like, you know this one you, you just have to analyze which one is the best it's it's a brain game like okay take another game for example arc knights integrated strategies there when you begin the mode you, you are not presented with the choice like you know you cannot just go in with a flag pipe combination and clear everything um you have to like you know select a certain way to begin you know it's, it's either going to be a vanguard defender and supporter team comp or it's going to be a guard healer and i think defender or something like that but you, know, you have different types of sets and you have to like you know prioritize you have to plan it out down the road like you know you might get more coupons and then you might get a vanguard and you might get a guard sniper and all but initially you start you have to begin with what you're given and i feel this mode takes inspiration from stages like that you know from games like arc knights and not like i don't know divergent universe from star rail i feel divergent universe is much more irritating because you know with the artificial leveling it just artificially levels everything and i i don't know if it's actually pretty good or not is you know uh, i'm building my firefly and they just artificially leveled her and the stats are completely different like you know if if i don't put her artificially leveled she has something like a 220 break effect but if i do it she just gets 170 180 i don't know what's going on over there I think this swap the artifacts. So like, yeah, th this one is tough. This one is super tough. Now you can see uh, why people might find it tough. So like you know, if you go in with team comp like this, where you have three DPS units and then you have G, it just doesn't make sense at all. It just you know doesn't make sense because over here you need someone with a crowd control unit. So that's what I'm saying. You gotta, you just gotta plan it out. If you don't have a crowd control unit, um, you will need to, like, you know, prioritize, uh, rewind, and remake your team. I, I'm gonna swap to Alakino after this. You're gonna see that because Alakino is a very good crowd controller, and she deals tons of damage. So, like I said, you just gotta plan it. Plan it really well. By the way, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> personal opinions though, is is it's better than the abyss? Like you know, I find it better than the abyss. 
see i'm using all two vigor because you know i need to save arlequino and shogun for the final boss so after this i'm not going to use arlequino and shogun until act eight so that's what i said by you know planning it out so like you just have to make your thorough decisions you have to be confident that you will be able to clear future nodes or you have to select the node that you can clear without using your strongest characters you could adapt to using you know characters that aren't meta or that aren't strong because these enemies health aren't that huge they don't have massive hp pools which is good but then there's the problem of you know the restriction overall it's a very uh, what should i say controversial game mode like you know some people might enjoy it like me and then some people will hate it to the core because you know they can't use their own teams they can't use their own characters they just want to uh, use everything with new villet or uh, alakino shinjo bennett something like that and i think this one this mode will be more infuriating for people who who like to play meta or who like to like you know just just play with the most optimal team forms ever so like you know who, who play for the numbers i think people who play for the numbers will hate this mode but people who play for like you know just, just the casual people who like you know have no idea how to make teams how to do team comp how to do rotations what to use when you know like people like me who like you know i just, I just swap to whoever i feel like um i mean I, I just do it like that, you know, Farina, then maybe Zhongli, then I don't know, switch to Baiju, then New Alert. I don't have a pattern like that. I just, you know, do random stuff here and there while doing the Abyss and while playing games in general. Because it's fun that way. So, you know, people who just, you know, do, do random bullshit go, it's good for them. But people who do not do that, uh, they're in for a, they're in for a ride. Honestly, as I said, you're getting companions, select all the companions because you know companions are going to be your lifesavers. Alright, let's head off. Also, like you know, I, I've used all my five star characters. Because you know, I have that many five star characters. Uh, I'm lucky that way, but I am also a Welkin like you know, buyer, so I have, I I always have a Welkin going. The thing is if you don't have them, like you know, if you want to follow the same strats that I did, if you don't have these characters, you can switch certain characters with others. Like you know, um, you can save Arlequino. Trial Arlequino is good. Okay, I'm not going to reject that. The build is good enough for this mode. Uh, in place of Raiden Shogun, you can have Fischl, Miko, Fischl. So like you know, you have two two teams out. <laughs> Beidou is a good option because you know Beidou with her parry system, the parry and attack, it's it's actually it deals a good amount of damage. And if you have off field characters, you know, if you have Shangling or if you have Baiju, then you can do burning or aggravate or electro charge or something like that. It just it just works. Beidou works. So you like you, you can use Beidou. Then you have Dory. Uh, people hate Dory, but I would suggest and I would recommend building Dory, especially for this game mode. Uh, just keep her at level 70 and you're good to go because, you know, she doesn't need that much investment. She's a good healer that provides energy as well. So, you know, if you're replacing, you know, my Miko with Fischl, you can replace Stride and Shogun with Dory. And it just works, you know, because she serves as a healer and an energy provider. It, she may not be riding Shogun, but she does the job. Now with this one, uh, if you if you if you do not have Kazuha, like you know, if you, if you're new and if you don't have Kazuha, I recommend getting Sucrose built. Sucrose is like you know a great crowd controller with amazing animal application. So if you don't have Kazuha, just just go build your Sucrose. Sucrose is amazing, and she only gets better with constellations. Other than that, Xianyun is perfect. Xianyun with her, with the skill tab, you can actually dodge many moves, like in many atta enemy attacks, and that is actually pretty nice. It's actually very, very nice because it saves you from the dodge system. 
Now the problem with the bishops is that you have to kill them at the same time. So you absolutely need an animo unit with crowd control uh, capabilities. Venti won't work honestly because you know Venti. I don't think his burst is cap is huge enough to pull these characters into one spot. So Kazuha, Sucros, these are your best options, and just try to attack them uh, as hard as you can with your hard hitters. Like you know, if you have, I have Huta and Yaimiko doing majority of the job. But if you don't have them, in place of Huta, I'd suggest you can keep Garming. Garming plus Xianyun is actually a good combination for the plunge attack uh, meta. If you have Diluc, Diluc also works well. Um, Diluc is actually pretty good, you know. Contrary to popular beliefs, uh, Diluc is a good DPS. Like you know, if you have him, you can build him. Then apart from him, Shevrus. If you have Shevrus, you can do an overload team. So you know, the, the choices are epic. You have Animo, Pyro, and Electro. And you just have to like you know figure out the combination, figure out the reactions. As a person, like you thoroughly enjoyed, what should I say? Overload, like you know it initially it was my favorite reaction in the game, and, and it still is. Like you know, I just love doing overload, so it's it's just perfect. Um, Chevrolet, if you have Chevrolet, Chevrolet is amazing. Try not to like you know go into nodes where you know will you will lose or you will have a tough time like, you know in that node which had a which had an abyss selector I think it was a hydro abyss selector so you have to do melt not melt vaporize and your other options are only swirl and or just say electro charge but with hydro I feel like you know dendro is one of the strongest options that you can use to destroy the shields. So it just depends on what you want to do. And plus, you know, the hydron cryo combination is so bad. Also, this this reminds me of Star Rail. I I, th I just think that, you know, the Genshin developers just, you know, took out something from Star and it whoa. And they were like, you know, just get into it. Then you know, the planets and all, it just looks like Star Rail. Okay. So you see, I have all, I have many five-star characters. We you know um, these special guest characters are game changers. Like you know, if you have Sijuin, Sijuin also works really well because you know, in two battles, you can do, you can manually apply Hydro, or with Risley, you can apply Cryo, and that just changes everything. And with Fontaine nodes, you have you know these Numa Osia stuff. You know, the first time that I did it, I had no Fontaine characters and, uh, and I was like, you know, where I'm gonna apply uh, Usia on new mom's. But now it just, you know, it works. The music is also really good. The music is fine. It's, it's fine. It's really fine. It, it's better than The Abyss. I mean, presentation-wise, gameplay-wise, fun-wise, I find it better than The Abyss. Abyss has become more of a more of a DPS check which honestly isn't that fun anymore because I just you know it's, it's more like you know just just go there do this and be done with it it, it isn't fun it doesn't invoke thinking power it's just it just exists same with you know what happened in Star Rail with uh, pure fiction or memory of chaos or apocalyptic shadow I just completely forgot about it and I never do those modes. I, uh, similar to Universe and Divergent Universe are much more replayable. And I feel like you know this mode will be replayable. The more and more you do it, the more and more you try it, you will enjoy it. I am guaranteeing that you know the initial the initial cry about it being tough is just you know like adjusting to a new thing. Like you know, when you have to adapt to a new thing, you have, you you find the difficulties. But after that, you know, give it two, three months, and then I'm pretty sure everybody would be enjoying this mode as well. Mm -hmm. And I do have hopes that you know that the developers will continue to improve it as well. So you know, I could see some improvements. Now, the fun part, the truly fun part, would be when Geo comes in the Imaginarium Theater. Because you know, personally, oof, personally. 
I have like I have many geo characters obviously but how many of them are built are actually a good question um so I have Zhongli built I have <laughs> Chiori built Noel built uh, Ning Wang built so four characters there that's it that's it we're dead we're gone so like yeah, you can you can see your stats over here as well. I didn't use any support cards because you know I'm confident in my characters. I love my characters, and I know that my C zero, uh, not not maxed and completely randomly built characters can clear the stage. Believe in the characters, like you like you believe in your Pokemon. I just I just like it. This game mode is fun. I, I'm I'm gonna be a defender for Imagineering Theater. And plus, you know, what's not to like about this entire setting. So as you can see, I saved my Arlequino from Act 1 to fight over here. Now this team comp is actually pretty good. You might think that, you know, Arlequino um, doesn't need Shanyan because, you know, Shanyan is a healer. But I just use Arlequino Plunge, which is actually pretty good. Dia is very good with Arlequino, very, very good. The damage mitigation that she does is amazing. It's 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 a lifesaver. I mean, people people disregard Dia, but I love her so much. And with Fontaine, I feel like you know she is she is somebody that you know people should have because you know uh, unknowingly she helps you a lot. You know, from the shadows, it's amazing. It's it's amazing. By the way, all these characters, only Raiden Shogun has her best in slot weapon and only Xianyun is the other character that has a 5 star weapon, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Xianyun has lost prayers and Raiden Shogun has, you know, her, her, what should I say, her best in slot, the, the whatever it's called, the spear, the, the thundering calamity, something like that. Rest everyone are on four star weapons. Um, only Hu Tao is C1, uh, Faruzan is C6, and Shinobu is C1. Rest all my. And you know, Dia is obviously C1 as well. But rest all of my characters are just, you know, C0. So, as you saw, completed it with random teams. Uh, sometimes you might think that it does not make sense, but it does. I also like this part when you know, we have the credit sequence. Credit sequence was actually pretty, pretty unique. Like, you know, I never expected this. So it shows you your entire stats, which is also amazing. Uh, the one thing I don't like is that you cannot replay credits for each run. So, like, you know, it's just a one and done thing, which kind of sucks, honestly, because I would love to see this, see this again. So in my first run, once again, the da highest damage dealer was Raiden Shogun, but um, Chlor Yaimiko had the most number of kills. Arlequino was still indestructible over there as well. And everything else was basically the same, you know, I had... It was the same roster. This was a shocker because in the last one I had a... What should I say? A, a Wanderer team comp that had the fastest clear time. Also, if you have friends with you know higher constellations, just go use them. Just go use them. Two battles, you just gotta plan it out. In total, it's eight battles. Like you know, one character can do two. It just works. And don't focus on the stellars, especially if you're new. Uh, stellars don't need anything, unless you're from the FGO gang. You can do the Stella. <laughs> I like it. 11 minutes, 12 minutes, one month for 12 minutes, it just works, it's okay man, it's the same in Star Rail, it's the same in, I don't know, in Star Rail, but yeah, that's it for now, you can talk to characters. You intend to take a rest, I concur, you do look quite tired. Self-knowledge is a good trait to have. Better to walk at a slower pace if it means you will travel further in the end. I brought some coffee candies. Here, take one. 
See, you get you get to see a side of characters you never know existed. Alakino gives you coffee candies. It's amazing. And you can change the music as well. I know you are a formidable warrior, but we must not underestimate the monsters in this domain. They seem to come in endless waves. Nor should you be afraid. I am here to answer your call, and I will stay by your side until every mystery here has been uncovered. With this blade, I shall slay any foe that comes our way. And I really like it that they've given actual voices to the characters. And of course, the music change. Yeah, I'm expecting more music to be added into this because you know at this moment it's just I think ten tracks or so. But still, it's good. Like if you want to switch it up, it's nice. It's like your, it's like a teapot, basically. It's like a combat teapot. It's like you know, it's like um, Clorand came into your teapot and 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 was like you know we gotta play D and D. So you set up the board, you have your characters, and then Cloran just, as the game master, she just sets down restrictions like, you know, this is it. We're going to have to play by rules. These restrictions are here. And then you're like, okay, what should I do now? So it's, it's kind of like that. If you played with that uh, psychology, it's, a, it's actually a pretty fun mode. And it actually, it's a good test. Also, you have these poses over here. I already bought my three books. You know, I love Noel. Noel scared me so much. Uh, Jean because you know she's the reason I started Genshin and then Shogun because Shogun I mean enough said <laughs> yeah uh, that's it for now this, this was my run basically and I, I just can't wait to see what what's gonna come next but until then if you're having difficulties like you know let me let me know in the comments below where you're finding trouble and maybe I could help you or you know let me know how your feelings are towards this endgame mode but still it was a blast playing it and in the overall structure i'm just really glad that we have another source for primogens so like you know that my that my welkin player can you know get something from the free stuff as well but until then thanks for watching have a great day and please subscribe and goodbye